Hello to everyone out there at the liveactionanime.org forums. I am Thrash Till Death, and this is the third and final part of the post-Christmas review special, where I'm going to be talking about the last and my favourite of the releases that I've seen on the anime market in the UK in 2009. That release is Code Geass Lelouch of the Rebellion. This series has been a major blockbuster in the United States and in Japan before it, but it's only just recently found its way to UK shores due to a combination of cultural osmosis and my nation's general apathy towards these sort of things. Um, and it is one of those rare instances where I can confirm, quite happily I might add, that uh, the hype is entirely justified. Um, this is, yeah, it is one of those rare cases where 25 and episode series has found fame, and justifiably so. Um, the plot as it goes is, um, it's 2010, well in the, in the series I mean, not actually 2010, I mean it is 2010, but it's 2010 in the series as well, um, where the Holy Britannian Empire, which is basically the British Empire on steroids, has gone on to conquer about a third of the globe. And the whole empire, which takes place in an alternate history scenario, um, is basically like what Nazism would have been if um, it had been begun by the British monarchy and had had a dedication to high camp. Um, and as the series begins, the Britannian Empire is seen to annex Japan in pursuit of a rare mineral resource that's found there. And the Japan is invaded and occupied, and it's basically segregated into the Britannians who are living in all the high-end cities and everything, and the surviving Elevens, as they're now known, who are forced to live in the ghettos of the bombed-out cities. And the whole thing breeds cultural contempt on both sides. Flash forward seven years to 2017, where we're introduced to a college student named Lelouch, who's secretly a deposed member of the Britannian royalty. And he's, during a terrorist raid against the Britannian infrastructure, he's given the power of Gias, which allows him to utilize this power against anyone he sees fit. And he's able to bend their will and their mind to his control. He's basically allowed to issue anyone with an absolute command and they have command and they have no choice but to obey. Um, so Lelouch, being the egomani egomaniac in training that he is, uses this power to ferment a rebellion amongst the Japanese against the Britannian royalty, who he has a grudge against for the death of his mother seven years prior. And he basically just whips up a massive storm of rebellion against the sort of Britannian royals and the nobles from amongst the resident Japanese. And that this commences the body of the series, which is a lot of large-scale action sequences and um, games of strategy between Lelouch and his political opponents. Now, the thing about Code Geass is... Um, I reviewed Darker Than Black last week, and Darker Than Black actually presents quite an interesting counterpoint to Code Geass, in that they're both sign-in action series that came out around the same time and were sort of similar in tone, but that's more or less where the comparisons end. Because where uh, Darker Than Black was sort of a responsible, measured piece of storytelling, Code Geass is anything but. Um, it is, basically, in the words of my country, it is absolutely batshit insane. For one thing, you've got the editing. The editing, I've never seen anything like it in animation before. It edits at a pace I've never seen done in anything animated, in uh, Western or Japanese. Um, I, I can actually become quite disorienting for the first few episodes because you're just not used to seeing a series that cross-cuts this quickly. The dialogue is the same, the characters never pausing for breath or for a beat in between lines, almost to the point that I'd advise watching it dubbed, because um, 
it can be disorientating trying to read the subtitles uh, while the car characters are talking this quickly. The whole series operates on this huge operatic, melodramatic, larger than life plane. And it basically does everything in its power to take the viewer along with it. The narrative proceeds with the sort of speed that it basically has a total disregard for anything measured or reserved, like in Darker Than Black. It's like the narrative equivalent of a steak tenderizer taken to the jaw. Um, any given episode has sort of the events of what would constitute about three episodes of any other series crammed into, there, into it. And the whole series just proceeds at an absolutely breathless pace, not allowing the viewer sort of any time to dwell on any sort of plot holes or the sort of massive over-the-topness of the whole thing. Code Geass is a series that lives and dies by its cool factor. It has to, for virtually every second of its running time, keep the audience involved and just have them going, whoa, that's amazing, um, for virtually every second of its 25 episodes. And in that regard, it's a massive success because I was absolutely hooked and gripped for the whole 25 episodes. I don't think I can remember a series I've ever seen in my life where I've had this much just plain fun. Does that make Code Geass a great series in many respects? No, it doesn't. In, in several regards, it's actually very flawed. Um, the character designs are a good place to start. I mean, you've seen the box, you can see what Lelouch looks like. Um, the characters are both, e are all elongated and exaggerated to such a great extent um, that it almost borders the, on the line between exaggerated and plain ludicrous. Some of the fan service scenes are sort of uncomfortable and gratuitous. A lot of the characterization seems sort of stilted and dry, not really building up any empathy with Lelouch or his best friend Suzaku, who, who forms the sort of counterpoint to him in the series. The whole thing's very didactic, um, and everything seems to sort of serve the purposes of um, justifying vigilantism and, you know, m wartime morality and addressing those questions in a none too subtle way. But, again, all those flaws are can basically be ignored just simply by the fact that the series is able to just, by the whole massive, broad, melodramatic sweep it has, to take you over the top with it. The action sequences are consistently incredible. They operate on a dual layer of excellent animation, although the the artwork can be a little bold and over overblown at times. I think the general generally the animation is eye poppingly good, and the the action sequences are gorgeously rendered. And they also have sort of the dual layer of the, the sort of kinetic action and the works of strategy that are going on underneath them concurrently. You've got Lelouch's um, mind games uh, with his political opponents. You've got his sort of um, trying to maintain his dual identity while he remains in college and tries to lead a rebellion at the same time. The whole thing just absolutely bleeds tension for pretty much every second that it's on screen. The dialogue all seems to operate in sort of massive operatic gestures and gesticulations and proclamations and oaths, and virtually to the point that every line in the series is some sort of bold, um, grand sweeping gesture. And the whole thing, it, it doesn't leave the viewer room to breathe, almost. All the flaws that it might have, any, any sort of concerns the viewer might have about sort of um, cohesive narrative development or maintaining a sort of consistent cast or organically developing the characters, all of that is essentially swept aside in just pursuit of this unbelievably heavy, tense atmosphere. And the whole thing just does add up to being just incredibly exciting. Simple as. Well, does this justify a four-star rating? I'm not sure that it does. As I've said, the flaws before 
They, they're there, they can't really be ignored. You're aware of them, but at the same time, you don't really care. Um, so, I guess, in a sense, this is... Code Geass is almost an acquired taste. I suppose there might be some people who sort of can't get past the sort of camp value of it, who can't get past the sort of perceived cheesiness, but otherwise it's very fun. It's it's three and a half star, I think. So yeah, this is pretty much my favourite series of 2009, simple as. So yeah, we've got a lot of good stuff on the horizon for 2010. Um, so. I'm Thrash Till Death, and this has been Code Yes. I can't wait for the second season to hit the UK. See you all this year. Goodbye.